One of the things that TRID did was create now just two documents. There is one called the loan estimate form. And the slang for that is called the LE, loan estimate. And the second form is the closing disclosure. And the slang that you hear for that is the CD. All right. So these are now the only two forms that TRID uses, the loan estimate form and the closing disclosure form. Now, let's talk about each one of these. The loan estimate form is that form that the consumer must receive from their lender explaining all of the costs. Go back to what we said. That buyer is buying a $100,000 house, but he is going to spend $107,814 or whatever number I made up earlier. That buyer would get that number from this thing called the loan estimate form or the LE. And under federal regulation, that form must be given to the consumer within three business days after they make the application for the loan. I will guarantee that that is a test question. It is three business days, all right? So you must understand, if the guy makes a application on Friday, Monday, Tuesday, it must be received by the consumer within three business days after they made the loan application. The lender is the one that will put this out. And on this loan estimate form, he will have all of the fees that are going to be associated with closing. Now, I'm not sure what happened right here. I guess I got an extra space. <laughs> but the loan estimate form, once it has been submitted to the client, then that is what the fees are going to be. And he will put all of the fees on this form. Everything that constitutes that closing amount. So it would include, you know, the hundred grand, but then there's seven thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars in closing costs. And that 718, $7,814 is how much the consumer was going to spend to buy that $100,000 house. So in essence, the buyer is going to spend $107,814. 100 for the price of the house. And then this money that was on the loan estimate says this number. So the question is, where does this number come from? And this is what the lender will put together or the mortgage broker, depending on how you get. And that number is comprised of three types of numbers. All right. There are three types of numbers right here. There are three, they call them categories three categories of numbers. The first category is a number that the lender or mortgage broker will quote that has zero tolerance. What does that mean? Means it cannot change. Zero tolerance. These are things that may not change before the closing. These are things the lender has control of, like the interest rate. If the lender tells the borrower that I've locked you in on a loan at 5.5% interest, that's what the loan will be. It cannot change. It has zero tolerance, okay? The second set of numbers 
are numbers that are called 10% tolerance. These are numbers that the lender doesn't necessarily control, but they have a good idea and they recommend using this person. So the lender may say, if you use Chicago title, your title insurance policy is going to be $500. Well, it could be 450 to 550. That is a 10% tolerance on that number. It is not their number, but they are suggesting that company to them. It is a recommended. Therefore, they can be within 10%. Here's the third number that just cracks me up. There is a third set of numbers that are allowed what's called an unlimited tolerance. These are numbers that the lender has no control of and probably doesn't even know who's providing the service. The most common one would be homeowner's insurance. All right. There are so many insurance companies out there that the, lend the lender or the mortgage broker really doesn't know who the buyer is going to use. Are they going to use the general? Are they going to use progressive? Are they going to use Lincoln Life? Are they going to use whomever? So the lender will put down a number like $400 a year. It could be theoretically $17,000 and that lender is not in trouble because there's an unlimited tolerance. Now, in the real world, what happens is that lender talks to the buyer and says, who are you using? And the buyer says, hey, my buddy over at Jefferson Life and, or Jefferson uh, Insurance. And that lender calls him and goes, hey, man, I need a ballpark for a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot in that Miami Dade County property. And that <clears throat> insurance guy is going to go. Well, without an exact quote, but I'm going to tell you it's in the ballpark of 900. Then the lender will use that number because they want to be as close as possible, but they aren't required to be. And that's where this number comes from over here. Now, I think I erased it, so it's gone. Nope. That's where this number comes from. They will add these three numbers, which have zero tolerance, 10% tolerance, and an unlimited. This would be like the interest rate. This would be like a company they refer. I'm not going to use that word because I don't want you to confuse. This might be a company that's on their list of suggested companies. And this is one where they have no idea. This would be like a title company. This might be a homeowner's insurance company. And then they will add these numbers up. And that's where this number comes from. So you can see that even though they may have an unlimited tolerance right here, they want to be close because they want that number to be as acceptable to the consumer. Because with RESPA, I told you it allows consumers to shop. So what might happen is they may go to another mortgage broker and that other mortgage broker goes, well, dude, you're buying that $100,000 house and I think it's going to be 5790 to close because he had a better estimate of that unlimited tolerance. So the consumer may go, oh, I'll use that guy because it's cheaper. In this scenario here, it's only 105,790 where this guy's 107,814. So while they can have an unlimited tolerance, they typically love to try and get close. So this number is as competitive as it can be so that they don't lose the deal to another mortgage broker. The second document that gets collected or the second document that gets created is this thing called the closing disclosure. Now, for some reason, my timer's on the screen here. Let me see what's going on. 
Well, I guess we'll just deal with that timer. Um, let's move this up here so we can get away from it. The closing disclosure is the itemization of that number. All right, we talked about this number here, and that comes in the loan estimate form. The closing disclosure is actually the itemization of that list. Where does that 5,714 go to? You go to a credit, we pulled credit, you got title insurance, you've got courier fees, you've got recording fees, you've got because we can fees, all of that. And they that closing disclosure <clears throat> must be given to the borrower, once again, three business days before closing. So everybody gets a chance to look at it, including the lender themselves. So that closing disclosure has to be put together by the title company. They take that loan estimate and they put all those numbers in and get a final document, if you will, that will tell exactly where that money is going to, who's getting what, who's getting, and that is called the closing disclosure. And once it is completed, it will be then sent to the seller and the buyer and the lender for review. And it has to be three days. So basically what I'm telling you is when that closing disclosure comes out, you cannot close for three days. And there, when this first started happening, I remember people in the industry were like, well, are there ways to get around it? Can I pull a favor? No, because this is a federal law. Everybody gets at least three business days to look at it, okay? That is the closing disclosure. Now, the closing disclosure could change because of something the borrower does. For instance, if the interest rate has a significant change on the loan, we have seen this happen. We had a borrower who went through the entire process and was getting a 30 year fixed loan. About halfway through and about 10 days before closing, this young borrower came to us and said, hey, my dad said I should really have a 15 year loan to pay it all faster. I want to change my loan product. And that's what they call it. I want to go from a 15 to a 30 year. So I want to change the loan terms. That would require us to start all over again and give a new estimate three days and then create a new closing disclosure. And that would give everybody three days again to look for it. So it could change because of a significant change to a loan term. And one of the things they ask, I believe on the question, is if the APR has a greater change than one eighth, which is 0.125. If the interest rate changes more than an eighth, it could potentially be considered a significant change, which may trigger a new closing disclosure. And if that gets triggered to be a new one, then that three day time frame gets kicked back in again. Well, we gotta wait three more days again. All right. 